Would you bow with me as we pray for Gary? Father, we are so blessed. One of those blessings is Gary and his family. Father, we ask that you bless him this morning, that he will remember the things that he has studied. And let us remember, Father, that what he is speaking to us is from you. Father, we're so blessed to have him here, and we ask your blessings upon him and his family. And help us this morning to be attentive to the things we hear, that we can apply them in our lives and to those around us. Thank you for the blessings of life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jim. Morning, church. Morning. Certainly happy to see you. Our numbers are way down today. Uh, I attribute that to COVID, I guess. Certainly it wasn't last week's sermon. <laughs> but maybe it was. That's all right. Happy that you're here. Probably more folks watching on Facebook and on uh, YouTube later. You know, uh, it is so exciting to have uh, Gilda starting with us uh, tomorrow and, and all. And what I have quickly realized is a lot more thought and effort went into hiring a secretary than the preacher. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a worldwide search. So uh, we're, we're happy for that. And, and then to find her right here in her own backyard uh, is, is exceptional. So uh, she will be getting started with us, uh, I, I guess, tomorrow. And uh, happy to have her and, and have patience with her as you have with me because today's lesson is on patience, <laughs> right? We're back in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 22 and 23, uh, talking about the fruit of the Spirit. If you notice the title up there, it says fruit of the Spirit, not fruits of the Spirit. Um, before we've had fruits of the Spirit, and um, it's really fruit of the Spirit, and, I, and someone here, uh, uh, Lynn Henley, called me out on that and, and said, Gary, it's just fruit of the Spirit. I said, gotcha, Lynn. And uh, anyway, so it's fruit of the Spirit. I just want you to know that. And Lynn, you were right, okay? Thank you, Lynn. Let's go to the next slide. Let's look at the verse there. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. So we looked at, at these starting with love, and I don't know if, if the Apostle Paul put these in any kind of order on purpose. Um, love, you would think, would be first, and, and so it seems like there's a semblance of order there, but love and enjoy, and we talked about peace uh, last week, and on all of these uh, fruits of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit. I think it's fruits when I'm using it that way. Lynn has me so confused now. I, 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 it's, it's messed up my whole sermon. But uh, when we look at them, I could do a series on each one. I, I really could on love and joy and peace and, and studying and looking at things. And we get down to patience. And it's the same way. And it was how, how do I want to develop this? Because when, when we think about patience, you know, we could look at patience that God has with people. Boy, that's a lot of patience. We could look at our patience with people. Our patience maybe with God, right? Maybe about patience with ourselves. We could look at patience driving on Highway 98 in the summer. A lot of different areas that we could look at Thinking about patience. Thinking about patience. So this morning I am going to kind of do an overview of it because I was spending one week on, on each of these uh, fruits of the Spirit. And, um, you know, we've, as I said, we looked at the first, first three. We're looking at patience. The story is, is told of a, of a young Christian who went to an older Christian for help. He says, Will you please pray for me. I need more patience. You know, that's a hard thing to pray for. We're, we're, it, it, it scares me to pray for patience. And the same way with this young guy. He, so he asked this older guy, hey, will you, will you pray for me for more patience? And they knelt together and the old man began to pray. He said, Lord, send this young man tribulation in the morning. Send him tribulation in the afternoon. Send this young man. And, and the young Christian stopped him and says, no, I didn't ask you to pray for tribulation. I wanted you to pray for patience. 
And you know what he said? He said, yeah, it's through tribulation that we learn patience. So l- let me tell you, I- I'll go and start this. As I have considered patience, here are several things about me. I think as I get older, I become more patient. Not sure why, but probably because of tribulation and things that have happened. Secondly, you know, this is the oddest thing. I am so much more patient with my grandchildren than I am with my children. You know, my son Zachary, who's almost 15, could say, Amen, Daddy. <laughs> I am sure. Because, I, I, um, you know, my grandchildren pretty much, well, you know, Poppy, can I do this? Poppy, can I do Yes, you can. <laughs> Poppy, can, can, can we eat a chocolate bar right before bedtime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all okay. They could even do something they're not supposed to, and I'm more patient with them. So patience, patience to me isn't just somebody says you're an impatient person or you're a patient person because it depends on the situation. It really does. I think I'm a pretty patient person overall. And then sometimes Rhonda has to say, Gary, drive with patience. Okay? Drive with patience. These folks on 98 really don't know where they're going. (laughs) I say, you're right. You're right. Be patient. Be patient. So we look at, so what is patience? Um, And there's some different definitions of it that I found One is self-restraint, which does not hastily retaliate against the wrong. You know, somebody does you wrong, how do you respond? Do you respond with patience or with anger? Another one is patience is the ability to accept delay or disappointment graciously. How do you accept and deal with delay or disappointment? Patience is the ability to accept it without becoming upset. Right? Right? Patience. I almost think this whole COVID thing is God's way of teaching us patience. You know, if you order something nowadays where you used to get it a lot sooner, it is, it is slowed down a lot. Uh, you know, you go, go to eat somewhere, it is slowed down a lot. Wherever it is, things have slowed down. Maybe God is teaching us patience. However, I think we read and hear about things every day where somebody has become so impatient that they do some crazy stuff, like running their car into the restaurant because they didn't get served uh, in a timely manner. People getting so angry, not being patient. And then there's another one. Patience is a powerful attribute that enables a man or woman to remain steadfast under strain while continuing to press on. You know, maybe that's where some of you are. Maybe some of you are dealing with difficult circumstances. Maybe you're raising a child and, you know, that, that can try your patience sometimes, right? Maybe you're caring for aging parents or, or you have a loved one who's ill and you spent long hours at a hospital or nursing home. Maybe you're weary, but patience is the quality that says this too will pass. This too will pass. You can get through this. And then the last one, patience is a calm endurance based on the certain knowledge, the certain knowledge that God is in control. That means if God is in control, we have to give up control, right? Agree with me, yes, we do. We need to give up that control and be patient. So much easier said than done, right? We are an impatient people. We are an impatient people. This past week, I was reading about a first grade teacher. She was having a very difficult day. It had rained that whole day and the children couldn't go out for recess. They had to stay inside. They got more and more restless and hyperactive as the day wore on. And she couldn't wait for that bell to ring at 3 o'clock. At 2.45, she saw it was still raining. 
she decided to start getting the kids ready for dismissal. She sorted out their boots and the raincoats, and she started helping them get them on. Finally, they were ready to go, all except for one little fella whose boots were just too small for his feet. There were no zippers or straps, and it took every last ounce of strength. She had to get them all. Now, you know what kind of boots I'm talking about. These rubber boots, right? Next slide there, David. The rubber boots. Now, for those of us who have been in the military and had to wear Kim Warfare gear, and we have these rubber boots to put on, that's like the grown-up versions. And so, like, I wear a size 10 and a half, but you got boots, like, for me, 10 and a half, I would get like 14 boots because my boot had to go into that boot and it took every last ounce of strength you had to get the, the crazy things all on. And then when, it, then when it was done, exercise, whatever was over, you, you wanted to cut them off because they were so difficult to get off. These are the same little boots. Well, same way, and they're very difficult to get them on. So it took everything she could to get those boots on his little feet. When last she did get them on, she straightened up with a sigh of relief. And he looked down at his feet and said, Teacher, you know what? These boots aren't mine. <laughs> Bless her heart. She didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. She was a good teacher. She smiled and she started taking them off. And they were harder to get off than they were to put on. She yanked and she tugged until finally the boots came off. Whew. little boy looked at her and says, they're not my boots, they're my sister's, but I get to wear them. <laughs> patience, patience, right? Right? Sometimes it's difficult to develop patience. I think developing patience is difficult because it goes against our human nature. We aren't born patient. Babies don't wake up in the middle of the night hungry and say, you know, you know what? Mom and dad are asleep. And so even though I just woke up and my diaper is soiled and I'm hungry, I'll let them sleep until about eight or nine. Then I'll let them know and then they can come change me and feed me and then we're all good. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. Babies aren't born patient. They want it, and they want it now. Oftentimes, our children aren't very patient. You ever travel with a child? Some of the folks down here, our tourists, say, oh boy, yeah, yeah. A little four-year-old little fellow was traveling with his mom and constantly asked the same question over and over. You know what that question was? Are we there yet? When are we going to get there? And finally, she, 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 she stopped and said, stop. <laughs> I can testify, boy. <laughs> we, yes. Been there, done that. She said, stop. Stop. We'll get there. I'll let you know when we get there. Do not ask me again. So he's quiet. Three and a half days, it seemed like. We don't always have the most patience. Another reason why developing patience is difficult is because oftentimes we have pride and selfishness and anger. These things can choke out the fruit of patience. There was a survey that came out a while back that says we're an impatient and oftentimes angry nation. We see it in, at work and school. We see it on highways. We see it all around us. Be patient. 
Thirdly, patience is difficult to develop because, well, it's pretty contrary to, to, to our culture. We don't live in a very relaxed culture. Now, some of you, as myself, we have been to third world countries. Is life different there? Oh, yeah. Because, you know, you decide at midnight you want a bag of ice? Good luck. In fact, they probably ain't, in some place I've been, they don't even have ice at all. There is no Walmart open 24 hours. You can't just get gasoline when you need it. You can't just go out and eat when you want to. Very different, very different culture. And more relaxed, more laid back. And when they say, yeah, we'll get around to that, it's not like regular old American guy says we'll get around to it, meaning six months. They might mean years. It'd be forever before they get around to it. Very relaxed, very laid back. And we're on a fast track. We're in a rat race. We're in a world of fast food, quick print, expressways, 10-minute oil change, microwaves. We want it now. Some of you might have heard about There's even a church down here in Florida. They advertise 22-minute services. Now, I am not going to tell you what church that is. So don't even ask me, not even after church. If you go there, they promise that in 22 minutes, be all over, you'll be out of there. The sermons are eight minutes long. Look, that ain't happening here. Eight-minute sermon, a quick service, kind of a drive through right? Is that what we've become? Eight-minute sermons? Another reason patience is difficult because we've convinced ourselves that impatience is a virtue. You hear people say, well, I may be impatient, but I get things done. We like those type A personalities, hard charging. Folks that get things done. And sometimes that impatience is seen as a, a virtue. Let's look over in Proverbs. Uh, 14th Proverb 29 says, A patient man has great understanding. But a quick-tempered man displays folly. There's actually several places in the Bible that mentions patience. Another one here is Proverbs 15, 18 says, A hot-tempered man stirs up dissension, but a patient man calms a quarrel. Patience is a virtue. Again and again, the Bible teaches that we need to develop this virtue in our lives. It was the story of a young man very upset with his mother, and, and, and he, he wrote her a letter, and it wasn't a very nice letter, and he gave it to, to his friend. He says, here, it's sealed up, stamp, drop this in the mail when you leave today. And the, the friend had kind of heard the conversation over the phone, and thankfully enough, he did not mail the letter, because the guy came in the next day and said, man, I wish I never had you mail that letter. And thankfully, it was not mailed. But you know the same way today can be with emails. You've been angry, you sit down, and, and you know all your patience is gone, and you type out that email. Let me tell you, I have done that. And then it goes into my draft box. Because I don't want to send an email out of anger. Be patient. Think about this. And if I still feel the same way in 48, 72 hours, maybe I'll send it at that point. You know I never have sent those emails that I had to put in my draft box. I've never sent them. Hmm. So how do we develop patience? That's the big question, right? All of you want to know. You're on the edge of your seat wondering, okay, preacher, tell us how we're going to develop this thing called patience, right? You want to know. I'm going to tell you today. Y'all ready, right? Because y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Y'all ain't got a clue because y'all just want to go out here and be mad at everybody on 98. But I am going to teach you. Y'all going to be so nice. Y'all going to be so nice people on 98. When, when, when you leave, listen, first suggestion here, first suggestion is the same with every one of these other virtues that we talked about, uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit. How do we develop love? How do we develop joy? How do we develop peace? How do we develop patience? The answer is always abide in Christ. Oh, preacher, that's pretty simple. Yeah, it is, isn't it? John 15, 5 says, 
I am the vine. This is Jesus talking here. You are the branches. If a man abides in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Abide in him. Hmm. So it's important to receive the nourishment only Christ can give. We can't produce patience unless we're abiding in Christ, walking in his steps, reading his word, growing in our prayer life, spending quality time worshiping, fellowshipping with brothers and sisters in Christ. Other things we can do, for example, we can slow down. Remember McDonald's years ago used to have this slogan, you deserve a break today. Some of us older folks will remember that. You deserve a break today. I mean, that's from a fast food restaurant telling us, yeah, you deserve a break. Get in here, get out, get back on the road. That's not much of a break there if you ask me. You deserve that break. The Lord came up with this Funny idea of a Sabbath day, a day of rest. Day to worship. Bodies need it, minds need it, spirits need it. We need time to reflect on God and what He's done. Absorb His teaching. Just be patient and relax. Thirdly, we need to overlook little frustrations of life. You know, there are little frustrations in life. Not, not the big things, the little things. So, the grocery store the other day, while I'm there shopping, going around, there was a young lady, young mother, with her daughter, maybe a year, year and a half old. Daughter was in her cart and they were going along, the child asked for cookies, and mom said no. She began to cry loudly, and mother patiently said, now Susan, we're halfway done, it won't be long. Same thing happened in the candy aisle, this time a little girl crit kicked, and she was screaming, mother said, there, there, Susan, Susan. Only two more aisles, and we'll be done. At the checkout counter, a little girl reached for the gum. Her mom said no, and she began to scream. This little girl was screaming louder than ever. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Y'all probably had ch children like that, right? We have. And then they do that stiffen up like a board thing. You ever had that happen? Especially you putting them in a car seat. That was pretty much what was going on here. She was upset. She stiffened up in that, in, that, in that cart. And I'm in the next checkout. And, you know, I'm a pretty observant guy. I'm watching this. I said, wow. It's Susan. We're in the checkout line. It's okay. And Susan, in five minutes... We'll go home, and we're going to have a nice nap. Well, we finished up together, and when we went out, I saw she was going, she was actually parked right next to me, and we go out there, and, you know, I'm a kind guy, and I said, wow, wow, here, I'm getting ready to teach a sermon, to preach a sermon on patience. I said, ma'am, I couldn't help but notice how patient you were with little Susan. She says, well, thank you, sir. Uh, she says, but my little girl's name's Francine. I'm Susan. <laughs> okay. Uh, Little things in life. And that can seem like in, in those situations that it takes forever to get through life, to get to the grocery store, to do the little things in life when you have something like that going on. And, and then the big stuff comes along. And what do you do when you go to the doctor and he tells you that you have something serious, seriously ill with you? What do you do when you lose your job? What do you do when your children disappoint you? What do you do when your spouse leaves you? What do you do when your house is empty? What do you do? 
And the Bible teaches us that there are things that we can do. And I'd like us to look at the illustration of this in the 14th chapter of the book of Exodus. Moses led the children out of Egypt, uh, excuse me, out of Israel. Excuse me. Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. They're standing there on the bank of the Red Sea. Before them is this great body of water. Behind them they hear the hoofbeats and the chariot wheels of Pharaoh's army. They're caught between a sea and an army. And what do you do in a situation like that? Exodus 14. Moses, weren't there enough graves in Egypt? You led us all the way out here to die in this God-forsaken place. And Moses says in verse 13, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians that you see today, you will never see them again. Going on to verse 14, such an important verse here, Moses says, The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Teach a little patience there. It's critical that sometimes we be still and wait on the Lord when it comes to the big stuff because our God is big enough to handle it. Then we see Jesus, perfect example of patience. Once again, turn to Jesus here. We look at the Gospel of Matthew in 26th chapter. Um, Jesus going there to the Garden of Gethsemane. Leaving the rest of the disciples by the gate, he takes Peter, James, and John with him into the inner recesses of the garden. He says to them in Matthew 26, 38, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on, he went on a little further by himself, and he prayed. We see this in Luke 22, 44. It says, And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. He is in deep hurt, deep, deep anguish. He comes back and he finds Peter, James, and John sleeping. Now how would a person react to that? Here Jesus was experiencing the most terrible night of his life upon earth and they fall asleep, not once, but three times. And yet he treats them with love, and patience and kindness. Dr. Evelyn Christensen wrote, and she, she's a cardiologist, she's talking about describing Jesus' drops of blood at the Garden of Gethsemane. She talks about it being extremely rare, grave stress, the blood vessels break, mixed with the sweat. We've heard this before. She said, I grieved at how Jesus' disciples could sleep when he kept appearing to them with his forehead bloodied. She's figuring he's coming back. His forehead is bloodied from the sweat drops. She says the skin becomes so sensitive when it sweats blood that touching it is almost intolerable. She said, I cringe at how my Jesus could stand to have the crown of thorns put on his brow. Wearing it for us. The scourging, the mocking, the spitting at him. All for us. Because let's remember, we sing a song. He could have called... 10,000 angels. The Bible says it could call legions of angels. 10,000 angels. Now, you know, think about that now. You can go back to your Hebrew Bible, to the Old Testament, and see what destruction one angel could do. Imagine Jesus looking up to heaven, telling the archangel, come get me off his cross. That's all he had to do. All he had to do. But his overwhelming patience, his overwhelming patience with us and with those who were doing all of this to him and with, and with, his, with his apostles there, with all of these folks, these people who had deserted him, gone off, denied him, all of these things. Wow, what patience. 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but wants everyone to come to repentance. I think sometimes we wonder, you know, why isn't 
God just stepped in and stopped whatever's going on in this world? Why doesn't he just send a lightning bolt and intervene when injustice runs rampant? I think God is just being patient with us. God wants all of us to be saved, and every day he waits just one more day for people to repent and come to him. Church, we're going to finish here. Let me encourage you. The door of salvation is open. Listen to that. The door of salvation is open because our Lord is patient. He's patient. If you've been putting off becoming a Christian, you know, we'd love for you to do that today. If you need to come back to the Lord, we'd love for you to do that today. You know, if there's something going on in your life and you need help, if you need help, guests, listen to me. If you need help, even while you're down here, we're here for you. We're your church here for you, okay? If you need help, if there's something we can do for you, you can call on us. Keep our bulletins. It's got our names and numbers in there. Call on us. The Lord is patient. He wants us to be drawn closer to Him every day. Church, if there's anything we can do for you this morning, if you need some help, if you need some kindness, if you need some love, whatever it is, we're here for you. The Lord is patient. The Lord is patient. His invitation is open for you. If you have need of His invitation, we invite you to come right now while together we stand and while we sing.